I, I don't know. I've got no words for once. We're just in this this weird world where Gambit is down zero one. I'm still map dreaming. Pink. You know, I'm, like, I'm still waiting for like room service to knock on my door. You know, wake me up. Mate, there's 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 a wild world in where Gambit now go out straight away single eliminations in the quarterfinals of an event that they were supposed to win. And I'm just going to start with this part because we all saw the major, right? Nafani would give certain interviews and say like, oh yeah, we're fine, this is all good. Hobbit would give an interview and say something completely different, right? Seeing there was a, a slight disconnect on where the mentality was. We just saw the interview before this game and he's like, we've changed some things on Dust2, we're going to keep trying Dust2, test the map, pull out. What's they're going just, on? They're just playing some mind games that we don't know about. <laughs> what, no, what, what, what like, the, the thing is like, we spoke about Gambit wanting to send a message. Yeah. And if the message is we don't know how to play Dust 2, then it's delivered. It's definitely you know? working, right? It's it's offers, some, yeah. yeah, some different, like very strange things happened on the on the map from the very beginning. Yeah, they are they opened up 4-1 and I thought they're gonna just run away with like a double yeah. digits gonna lead. Yeah. And they started doing the exact same thing they did against Fiend. Like if you can show round nine. I think we have somewhere that, that we can show it. It's a, uh, you can see basically right here at, maybe this is the, this is the opener. And even in this point, look at this. This is a 4-4 round there. Like they ended up, they started the round with a 4.5K money and they in 130 they have two flashes left. And they still haven't taken Cat. And they ended up like this round, at the end of this round, they ended up executing short. Like, how do you think that's gonna work? You know, you need a bunch of flashes yeah. to execute against the AWP on mid-long. Yeah. That's what you did wrong against Fiend and then Harn punished you. This way, they ended up in a maybe 45 seconds or even 30 yeah. seconds walking out short. Luckily for them, they won this round because Hobby jumped down CT, killed someone, they just, you know, got some... some they aimed those, yeah. Yeah, just battles. Mm. But without flashes against teams like Big, they're just gonna get punished by the op, yeah. you know, and then already one punish them. So those kind of basic stuff from Gambit really led to them losing this map. Just like the opening flashes, you know, as, as, as we mentioned in the uh, the opening segment as well, you know, those flashes are just not, not leading to kills. You, you throw them around at the end of the, you, you throw them away at the start of the round and then you have nothing left where you can actually just like capitalize on. And we saw five AKs there, for example. Yeah. You know, your support pieces, the, the upper B player, the long mm. player, they need to get the weaker weapons so they can get the full utility, right? And then in the executes, they're the one that actually throwing the flashes for the entry, entry fraggers to go in and take the space. And they're the one together with the knob who are closing down the rounds. After the trades, you end up in a 2v2, 3v2, 2v3, doesn't matter. Yep. Your support pieces are going to pick up that entry, entry, uh, entry's gun, right, the AK, and then they're going to close it down the round. They're going to have the flashes. This way, they're playing slow default with limited flashes. It's simply not not good enough in the in the, in the round where you have a limited flash, like four or five. Mm. You need to take something fast and yeah. use those flash spots. For example, a fast cat take, something like close up B pop, something like that, or a mid pick really early on or something like that. They played so default without flashes and it's just ends up as a disaster at the end. And it's really uncharacteristic. This isn't the gambit we, we know and love, right? It's not the gambit we think of in terms of putting a game up like this. But we also got to give Enterprise credit the fact that they're still playing this really solid CT side, mm -hmm. right? They definitely have the protocol to work off each other and they have this right now this momentum behind them where they're like look we can do it we can take these teams down this is like the fucking honeymoon scenario for these guys enterprise lost both pistols yeah yeah and they won the map 16 12 against gambit on dust too you know it, it just shows you that again like you said they have a good ct side right mm. the protocols are nice the flashes the reactions and everything else on t side they were playing solid as well you know clutch situations they were like uh, playing with free you know, just they were not scared of like doing certain thought, moves yeah. and just like defaults were fine, taking spaces fine, executions were relatively all right, you know, it was just enough for them to win the man. And we had this this clutch round in there as well, yeah. right? Where it was Shiro versus Forzy and he played it to perfection. Yeah, just like looking at this at this round, you know, Forzy obviously just have a scout on his hand in the 1v2, gets the kill here on Inters, and then just the, the movement here, you know. When you're playing against like the top, one of the top teams in the world, and one of the best players in the world, the one v one, you know, some players might get scared, you know, try to fake out the bomb plant a few times. But first, you know, he navigates through city, picks up the op, and then knows like, okay, well, Shiro probably is on B, just does the plan for long right, and then you can see at the end of the round, he just walks down into pit and basically has that completely covered. Now, Shiro with like no utility, as you know, we usually see that from the Gambit players for the end of the round, right? They have nothing to work with, and that's why he goes through short hoping to pick up some, maybe a, a smoke or two, like from his uh, the dead, the dead bodies around here, yeah. but no such luck. And just this one play where he just like plays it so smartly from Forces and you know, it just secures the round for them. It's a very important round as well. Yeah, Forces played them like a fiddle. 
you know, no smokes to pick up. He played it like very smooth, you know. He wasn't scared at all about no. making that move. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's a 1v1, doesn't matter if it's Shiro, you know. The guy who is like a good in clutch situations. But the thing is that he played it like very loose and free. That shows us that these guys are not under pressure. Mm. They're like feeling good. They're feeling, you know, relaxed and they're just playing CS. This is like a veteran type of move. This is like exactly. a, somebody who played the CS on high level for a, for a while now, you know. Somebody with the less experience, like, you know, most of the players with less experience, they would just go for that B pawn play, yep. play 1v1, 50-50 uh, there, but he just made the made the play, made the move, won it. Now, real quick, because we got to go straight to the game real soon, but i got to ask you guys, are we now feeling nervous when it comes to Inferno? Because Enterprise preparing and getting ready for this? I'm, I'm, I'm harsh on Gambit about this, Dust, too, because they yeah. need to take a deep, hard look on the, yeah. on this, like, you know, basic stuff that they are doing right now. But I also, on the second, second hand, I believe that they should be winning this match nonetheless. You know, this could be a one-off. They're still a, they're still a gambit, right? If they shook off that whatever happened in the first map and coming into the second, like, you know, full reset, then I don't think it's going to be that problematic, but enterprises on the other side, they're just playing good Counter-Strike. Yeah, logic dictates that Gambit should still take this, right? But I think we'll see some really cool stuff out of Enterprise and Inferno. That pick just like gives me a message that, you know, they have something prepared here, so we'll see that. Cool. Well, neither of you know how to do anything in a quick wrapped up way, so I'll quickly get over to our commentators. Let's get it on. Well, to quickly emphasise how we feel about this scenario, Dwight was saying it before we went on broadcast, he might see a 2-0. So mm -hmm. he has no faith left in Gambit, apparently, mate. Tell me why. Well, May, look, you have to have a look at it and go Enterprise delivered right here on Dust2. They're coming in, they're feeling it. They're th they would think as if they're on the top of the world right now, taking a map off a Gambit, their map pick, going into their own, even though they're on a slight losing streak when it comes to Inferno, five maps in a row, it's still a strong map for them. And it's one that they pick somewhat regularly in best of threes. Yeah, I, I am looking at this one. I still feel like there is risk in Enterprise picking into Inferno. And, and I feel like there's still a possibility that Gambit can take it to a third map. But you're dead right about the way that I perform on that dust too. That was incredible stuff from them. Definitely shouldn't have seen them go toe to toe against Gambit in the way that they did. So they deserve all the plaudits, all the credits in the world for that particular map. The question is, can they replicate here on Inferno our second? Can they close it out in two? Can they eliminate Gambit in the quarter final? This is the pistol round to start things off. Enterprise out to the T start there, all the way up in Banana. Nafani has his USP set as the first contact with Hobbit out on the first boost. He actually takes that first contact and that first kill. It seems like there's a lot of pace going into this pistol round, but they still left the bomb and a player in from the bottom of mid towards that T-spawn area. I think the Enterprise were expecting Gambit to rotate down mid and try and see if they can cut a rotate. It didn't quite happen. Forcing forward in towards the B of the A side, I should say. Three players standing by. Axile and Inters on the crossfire. Seeing where Matty's is. First shot in. Axile with a double up as well. Drops that bomb and everything. Forzi with one trade. Does get two to return. Trying to open up this site for the plant, but he's the lone metal survivor left. 1v3. We'll get the plant down towards the shutters. And retake is on. They're going to come in so quick for this as well. Navani on site. Taps forward. Burst through. Gets his headshot. Gets the pistol for Gambit. Uh, their main objective in that 1v5 is just get the bomb down. That has to be it. There's no way you're going to be able to win a round like that when they combine through and for Enterprise 0 and 3 in pistol rounds when it comes to this best of three and all something they're really struggling with Jay yeah and Gambit have taken quite a number of rounds because of it it didn't stop Enterprise from taking that last map though so hold your horses for only a few moments here set in with the guns of course the force by will come back for Enterprise they have the bomb plant bonus you've got the AKs in on one player the Galil's on two more tech oh sorry Mac 10s Ortiz and Elife M4's SMGs back for the rest of the CT forces. I don't know about this force, Jay. Again, 0 and 10 when it comes to the round two breaks. Yeah, they've got a bomb plant. They've got some level of decent weaponry behind them. They've got to be able to strike. And Hobbit's just aggressing down Banana. Oh, do they know? They might actually meet each other in the smoke. And straight in against Hobbit finds the spray. Eli credited. So Hobbit gets a little bit too overly aggressive and gets punished for it and all. Big start for the Enterprise side. You doubt the nature of this force fight to work out, but so far it has found the start. That's a great advantage, and if they can bait another CT forward, uh, allow an overly aggressive duel to come their way, then that would help out. They'll know that Shiro at least jiggle picked up with the angle. Axel looking for the trade back in apartments, and he's able to do it. 4v4 as a result of that M4. Axel took a lot of damage to return, though, so 
One for one trade is not quite as even as you'd like it to be, especially not in the case of Gambit. Shiro next to face. Captures one player, trying to transfer to that second. Seeing the third man as well. So info has been gained, at least for the CT forces. And the wraps in from Nafani will try and provide some support. Gets Mangus out of CT. The bomb is committing from Eli into that B site. Forzi might try something and catch the man off guard, take Nafani down. And that will leave two very low HP players for the read sake. But Nafani still wins that fight. Second kill to his name. Eli in the 1v3. Uh, just try and do some damage from here. If they can buy it up again, if they can get at least one more. We'll pick in this round. Mac 10 in towards construction. We'll look at a tree. Afani is extremely close, and these might not be aware of this. Two low HP players means the Mac 10 has only really got to deal with Afani, and he might still hold the round together, especially if he can deal with him clean. Smokes on to that construction entrance. He'll rotate back. I even push ahead of that smoke, hearing Nafani coming in from, is he aware of the second player? The bomb's directly on to Coffins. Eli has revealed his angle to stick the defuse. Axel with a face back, Eli looking for the player, but swings out too wide, allows the kill to come in, and the second round to come in for Gambit, the same. Hey, that was actually such a sick play for Nafani. He's the only B player, and look at how quickly they recognized that play. They knew that there was an M4A1 S out into the balcony and an SMG into the site. So they had the realization straight away, there's two players in A. Right, we're going to start splitting into B. There's only one player there. Unfortunately, Nafani makes a great play with that M4. Enterprise, though, they got another bomb down to force it up again. Guns in, the AKs. Galil's out, the Mac 10 Similar stuff, except the uh, upgrade rifle onto one more player. It means there's only one less SMG. In the area's down for the CT forces to try to stop any early mid control from Enterprise. They won't take directive contact against them. They haven't got the orbs out, but the rifles can still engage. Yeah, Enterprise haven't been able to get a massive amount of brackets control just yet. Hobbit aggressing forward, clearing out a lot of this banana position. Free range. So pushed up, M4 ready and waiting. Smoke's on position as they try and walk into the mid control. And Afani sprays up and Hobbit. Get some covering fire to escape from that banana aggression. They'll go back passive on the B site. That's okay. Enterprise are pressing A. Yeah, they have baited a fair bit of util out from the city side. Hobbit's got nothing left. Nafani's only got a flash. Axile's got nothing. They've only got one smoke and one incendiary to work with in the late round. And for Enterprise, it seems like they want to try and get back out towards this bracket's position. The HE only going down onto Forcey and not even really doing much damage. Lean up. Towards that long entrance, that long corner, Forzy hoping to catch someone at the arches or towards library. Trying to spot info, trying to spot players, get an opening frag. He's found a pretty nice line in. Not being contested directly by Hobbit either. Could find the wraparound on the site with the smokes going down, especially they might have their suspicions completely cut out. And Forzy indeed does isolate Hobbit thanks to his aggression. Three players still sit on the A site, though, so the defensive could very easily hold for Gamma Enterprise. Start Go moving, me. but that bomb rotates. They've still got Nafani back there, though. Ah, oh, this is such a great call. Yes, it's one player again. We saw what Nafani could do in the last round, but there's so many more T-side players. That's when it's going to force one of the side defensive. He can done a bump one. That might be enough. Ten seconds remaining. He spots his man, takes down one, but the Mac 10 is what has the bomb on its back. Mangus gets a trade on X out of the lurk back towards the A site, and the bomb will go down safely. Four versus three. Oh, there's just no util. All they've got is flashes. The tri peak comes in. The Eli falls. Brilliant adjustment from Nafani as well for it. Looks up to the site, and a flashbang to allow his teammates to start peeking. Out of construction, they'll go. NCMG drops in, falls you there with a responsive, and counter flashback from the T side will get more presence on the site itself. 2v2, and 4C and Mangus wait back here. They tap that bomb. Shiro leans up, spray through, gets his pitch back for now, and 4C can't hold on to Nafani. And it will be a defuse held by Gambit for their 3-0 starts. They're doing a lot right, Jay. And they're yeah. just not getting rewarded. They can buy again, though. Another round where they got a bomb plan. The loss bonus is starting to come through. They're able to get three kills. All it's going to take is one of these rounds to get one. And then the economy gets shattered by Gambit. And remember this as well. The damage that was done there towards Gambit in the last handful of rounds. It means the economy is limited for them. So Enterprise still up for resets here. Honestly done there by Shiro on the B-side defensive. And the AKs will come in. By technicality, our first true gun round. Loss bonus is building up. The forces continue coming in. Enterprise with the bomb plant bonuses. AKs v M4s. AWP out for Shiro. He misses that first shot. Refaces back for the second. Doesn't see contact, though. And not a lot of nades for the T side to work with at all, knowing that they don't have a Galil on a certain individual. They don't have a Mac 10 because they've decided to all go for those AKs. It will mean the late execution to try and get some map control on A is going to be difficult. Could just be an abs pop with this position. Moving up towards apps, they've got Forcey rotating up and all. Eli with him. AK just watching in from the bracket's entrance, hoping to see contact and a kill. So far, little has been found of either. 
Shiro waits for someone to peek in dry. If they have a flashbang, then this will be the perfect place to use it. I think they're going to set one up. Now that smoke, though, has really got to go down to Moto of any positions rather than long side. Not a lot of information being gained. At least they've got a lurk out to this banana position. And even with the boost up on the half wall, they're not seeing anything. The CTs of B are just so passive. We'll see moving forward. Mangus has the smoke down for him. They're going to try and sell some sort of B fake, I believe. Not a lot of utility brought into this round by Enterprise. So they'll have not a lot of it going into the execute itself. A single smoke and a flashbang. Smoke just got used there towards the B site. On the site itself, not to the players over at Cross. Mangus takes some damage with his attempted challenges past the smokes. Continues firing, trying to draw attention, but there's still three players on the A-hold as Enterprise start pushing. Flashbang seen. Adiz has seen one player. Matty's there with a responsive. Gets a double up. The AWP is sure is in the back line. The copy lands his second frag. Spots the third player as well. But Matty's is going one better. 2v2. Oh, Mangus is actually going to wrap in from behind. They're going to face the bomb plan and actually draw Hobbit out. Now they can get the bomb down. Fani looks in. Wait, no, he didn't plot it. He didn't plot it. Matty's, what are you doing, man? Prioritize that, the time has gone. Oh no, Enterprise. That is a true disaster round right there. Yeah, that's just a bit of, bit of panic in the late round. Not realizing how little time is left on that clock. They draw out the fight onto Hobbit. That was a great play to force one of those CTs forward out from library. Get that bomb down immediately. A slight missing communication in that 2v1 and that should have been an easy round for Enterprise. 4-0 start. The Lils, Mac 10s, part of a broken buy for Enterprise. They still have three AKs at least, so there's that. But man, they could have been on such much better footing here for round five, and they know it as well. And that's just pressure, honestly, to come through for the young squad of Enterprise. They're gonna start going quite quick. Aggression out to be. A bit wrapping over for Z to move in with Matties and Co. In the back line, Smoke's on position. SMG just blind fires it. For a spray to connect to a kill, nade onto position at the coffins. Does Eli for 43? Wonderfully placed. Holly could even find the kill against him so easily here. Incendiary onto the plant position. He should be able to sneak it in. He might go down with it. Matties will be the first to fall. Yeah, Hobbit just trying to try and stay alive. They've still got some nades to work with up onto this retake. One player down towards Banana of Force. He needs to get some impact. Waiting and baiting. Five on four, still gained by Gambit, but Hobbit will finally drop the low HP player in that exchange. There's three low HP players with the T side, and one of them just fell. Bangus out of the round. Afani will find a second on Forzy as well. Eli and Adiz, now just Adiz in the back stages of the back 10 involved. Can't hold on to Axile. The kill found the fifth round for Gambit in a row as well. Enterprise. Now they're starting to find some distance against them. Yeah, they're, look, they're putting pressure on. They're making these rounds incredibly close, incredibly com com competitive. The problem is just the round conversions aren't coming through, and, and that's going to be a good feeling for Gambit, knowing that you have to really come into the second map. It's your opponent's map pick. You want to get off to a good start. You want to really stretch that lead as far as you can. For Enterprise, again, we still keep talking about this economical situation. Eventually, if these rounds continue down this sort of way, all it's going to take is one round, and then Gambit have got no money so the Russians have to start looking at how they can make these rounds more convincing for themselves. Well they're just taking a tactical pause to go down that route and discuss that particular topic. But what do you think needs to be done Dwayne? Where does the confidence come from? For Gambit or for Enterprise? For Gambit. For Gambit, probably just trying to keep it up, try and get into the heads of your opponents, always try and keep these rounds on. You could see the way that this time around, they've actually got Util in the late round. Something they've struggled with in the last couple was not having enough nades when they needed to retake. So holding on to their Util later into the round has to be an important goal. Guns on the rear by, of course, three AK saved for the CT. So plenty of firepower, no worries about that front. Lays and incendiaries down into the Banana control, they will put the utility of the smokes and the Molotovs. Of course, no contact as a result of that. Walks in, the flash is over. Elive. Trying to get ahead of the broken wall. No one's going to challenge him directly, though. Hobbit is so passive. They always have been at B. They haven't been playing aggressively up to the sandbags, behind car. They haven't really put a lot of pressure towards Banana at all. We saw that one round that Hobbit aggressed right up. Other than that, that's been it. Porch Molly coming through to try and take some Brackus control. Force one of the CTs out. Barney on top of quad, sees the shoulder bait. Trying to extend against the man though. Force is a little bit too far out, so damage will be done. The Fani does not get the kill. The nade will make sure that that Brackus control is clear. The T's readjust. The bomb out towards stairs with it. Join Forzy. 
in the banana take it looks like it will mangus finds the pick on a though and they just need some of these individuals to step up with an opening man advantage and that happens right there the opportunity gets created out into the apartment and now enterprise can just go for the big exec smoke set in down across in coffins count the flash from Shiro will try to get ahead of the game. There is no smoke actually. It's just the cross knocked out. And Shiro will find Eli. So four versus four with Hobbit holding his frag back at second. Behind second, he'll peek ahead to the side. The bomb's been dropped. The CTs know it. And the spray goes over. But Hobbit comes up with his double and his triple. And Mangus on nine points of HP to win out of 1v4. He knows there's no chance. An awful cough and smoke coming down for the T side. Not landing at all. And it just means that they can't siphon off those angles. They can't force Shiro to be further back passive. The lineup that comes through, Hobbit doing so much damage, playing the off angle out from the fountain. And Gambit, this is probably one of the most convincing rounds we've seen for them yet on Inferno. Six in a row. And we talked about the risks for Enterprise picking into this kind of a map against a team like a Gambit. And oh, it's starting to come up real good for them here. Not looking good for our Dark Horse. It was a solid start as well when you think about how Manga picked up that kill, but as you mentioned, the smoke is not placed correctly. Hobbit and all the picks here. He's even a solo hold to the back of the site. Like, he did so well in that. I still don't think Enterprise have been disappointing here, though, on no. Inferno. These rounds have still been very close, and they've got a note to themselves. Guys, we're getting there. Yeah, we're down 0-6. That doesn't really give a full statement to just how competitive this first half has been. They'd love to be able to get around, though. Just have that confidence behind them. Here are AK buy in for them. They have got some rifles, some firepower to play with. Mostly just the pistols out for them, the upgrades and the deagles, the scout out for Z. The Mangus will be the main focal point. And to his credit, his entries have been respectable so far in this map. Let's see whether he can open up this one and take one of these four AKs out of play. It's Shiro instead to kick things off. Uh, great start in with that AWP, finding the first contact. And for Enterprise, just try to see if they can find some level of impact in a round like this. They don't have a lot of upgrades. They've got those hero rifles to work with. A pick from Mangus with the AK in the apartments could actually make a big difference. Axar backing up. The pit boost up for Shiro. Continues firing blind ahead of that smoke. The scout does connect a little bit of damage onto position. Not a massive amount of it though at this stage. A minute to the clock and Adiz will start walking in alongside Matty's towards that brackets control. Axel just sat here. AK's in hand, still waiting for that contact to come. And Afani could start making an aggressive play, push down the bottom of Banana and try and catch that bomb off. Missed the timing for a moment. Gambit playing through on A. Gambit have been stacking up their bomb sites really well these past few rounds. And Shiro set. Or pin connects a tag up. USP will take that fight against Matty. It's all important. Looking for a little bit more. Trying to face further forward. Connects it onto Elive next up. Hobbit and Axile come up with their picks. And it will be 7-0 for Gambit in the end. Attempt at the eco. The hero AK did not work out. All five alive. Gambit are on a roll. And this is perhaps what we saw glimpses of in that in Enterprise in Tropic game. We have a look at that last map, the Decider map of Mirage. Even though the rounds were quite close, it looked like it was going to be a competitive affair. They only managed four. And this could be the downside for Enterprise is no matter how close these rounds could be, if you're not posting them, things are not going to look pretty for you overall on your map pick. Absolutely not. Competitors, they might want to make the rounds themselves. They need to get something on the board soon. They could be up to flawlessly lose this half at 8-0. Have done damage to Hobbit, but they've been returned onto Matty's 42 versus 60. Better for the Gambit camp. And now follow-up H, he does damage to Elive as well. Uh, this util damage is so on point. Axile trying to see if he can work with the smoke into the apartments. Forzy does actually catch Axile off with a straight wallbang with the open apps. Yeah, he looked out from the bridge position, caught him with the information game by his teammate. Eli starts walking out the end of the smoke, and Afani finally aggressively into Banana, gets his one kill, only one kill. Back up for Inters has got to arrive back there. Hobbit's going to try to join the A site. Shiro connects a shot out towards mid. Not aware of Mangus, though. He finds his trades back, switches out to the AWP. AK of Hobbit sees where he's at, and might suspect even more players coming in from the long control. That bomb's got towards apartments. It will make its way in. Uh, just players everywhere for this Enterprise side. Baiting in the rotations, baiting in the mistakes. The way that Nafani got that first kill out to Banana and he even aggressed that top Banana smoke. This round is over. Hobbit's going to have to save onto the AK. Yeah, one on three for him. B-side retake is virtually impossible in this context. 
Smokes just to ensure it here for the T-side line, but yeah, he'll be back in Graveyard just to sit pretty and wait for the end of the round for the bomb to go up. Money is still all right here for Gambit. They have built it up from the early stages, so there should be a reinvestment around it. Unfortunately, it won't receive four AKs at this moment, but one is better than none. And just the picks coming through. Forzy with that AWP out from the bridge position. Trying the first one, didn't connect. Second one definitely did. And Matty's, that's an important kill onto Nafani, making sure that he over-aggresses. Inter's getting picked off by the AWP. And now we can finally start seeing the goods actually turned into something more, which is a round victory. And their first in this map for Enterprise would be the start of their map pick. Gambit. Holding on to that one rifle. And again, they have money to rebuy. They can afford the AWP. Two players can afford the AWP. And they'll pass it off towards Shiro, I believe, though. I don't think they want to go double up that up. We know that for Enterprise, the highest played map in the pool for them is Nuke, which is the Instaban that comes through from Gambit. Their second most played one is tied with Inferno, which is Inferno and Overpass. And you're not going to pick Overpass against the Gambit side. So even though Ancient was definitely an option, they are going to a map that they've played 18 times, which is a hell of a lot. Rifles in for both sides, both teams investing as you would expect them to. Enterprise in particular with the AK has crossed most of the entire board. Forzy and his or the top fragger for his squad. So that big green can dig in the big frags. Sounds the defaults three players in over from the CT defensive over on the B site. It will be challenged by Adiz. And by Matty's here. Stannis smokes some Molotovs in from both teams. And finally he's going to get the head of the control. All the way up towards Woodstack. Does not catch any info. Does not catch any contact. Just spotting and waiting. Yeah, putting some further nades down to any of the lurkers towards the bottom of that T-ramp area. Not going to happen at all. And now they're trying to see if they can bait the rotations. Gambit going to start leaving some of those B players back over the way. Here they go. Hobbit. Set with the AK out towards Archie's, not going to get checked. Okay, three fires in, he connects that second headshot as well. Mangus to drop, Matty's was a goner. Five on three for Gambit. Oh, what a great spray transfer coming through from Hobbit. And now even for Ajiz, he's got smokes all around him. How's he going to try and create space? He needs some of these long players to get a pick, find some impact. It's going to be difficult. First fire continues coming in past that smoke for Hobbit. Axile set in, spots him, sprays him, takes him down. Next two left standing for the Enterprise boys. What was a great previous round, gonna go to disaster right here. One now remaining, 4Z versus 5. Bomb drop, CTs know it, he's out of this. And to the guy that just saved in the last round, said, yeah, it's over. Just gonna hold on to the AK. And what a hold that is out from Arch. That's world class from Hobbit. Great spray transfer onto those couple of players. And really, once that happens, if you're not able to get that trade back immediately, you're stuck. You've got no way of finding room in from short. You're starting to get that one lurk up on Adyids, down in that hay position. He's trying to get up to the balcony, but then you've got an individual of Axile that's just sitting there as a lurk. And they're even trying to put pressure on to drop this player. Go for the hut, take him down, remove all five from play for Enterprise. The money is a little bit lopsided. Do you know for a buy in this context, Wake? I think you have to. You have to buy it up. You've got to keep pressure on. You won round eight. You lost round nine. You've really got to try and see if you can get something out of it. Otherwise, you're just looking at such a high deficit of rounds. And replay that Hobbit play one more time and just emphasize why it's always a good idea to save the AK because I don't think that transfer would have worked out as well as it did with the M4. Nice stuff again from Gambit's main veteran from the major winner himself. Eight to the board of the CT side. They have the half. Nades up, sprays through. Eli will catch Hobbit through the stack. So immediately, that same major champion has been removed from play. Smokes ahead. One player close from Nafani. Might not be aware of Eli just yet. The AWP backing up passive. Go for wall bangs. Nafani setting up U2 and Eli timed that peak so perfectly. No, he couldn't have timed that any better. And now for Shiro, it comes down to him to see if he can find some impact. He needs one hell of a multi kill. So he's the first. Smoke ahead of the cross. He'll get to sight. Backup's going to be so slow as well, so it is all on Shiro here. 
There's one player I trust in this context. It would be him, and he lands that second flick beautifully. 3v3 now brought back to even. He looks up against the D's time so bloody well. Look back in for the fourth. Zero doesn't last forever, but he's done so much with it. He set the rotators up, and Force is actually aggressing through the CT smoke. He's trying to cut the rotations, but he doesn't have his weapon drawn. What a holdout for Shiro, and he's the only way that that round can get one. What a beautiful sequence on the B side. Wow. Talk about Hobbit and his transfers. The Orc plays are so much more impressive. Shiro shows him no mercy. Gets that ninth round. As well as that, you consider the first two picks from Eli as well. This one, the Hobbit. Then this second one in towards the Broken Wall. But then this play shuts down every advantage that he fought to gain. And it's not exactly like they played this poorly. They had some decent spacing. The trade looked as if it was going to be coming out there from Forzy with the NWP. He misses that opportunity. Pace now out towards the top of Banana. And things are just falling apart for Enterprise. Pistols played in. Scout set for Forzy. The M4 of Hobbit's already found that first. It's a half by round for Enterprise. Get the economy stacked back up to a decent position and try work from there. But this should be 10 to 1, and I have no reason to doubt that Gambit would lose to the half by Ecos anymore. They just look rock solid in map two in a way that they didn't over on Dust 2. And yeah, they've turned it around. They've looked completely on here, and things are starting to flow with the confidence. Inter's falling back to the site. It's got a teammate to back him up of Axile. And it just feels as if for Enterprise, even with those first few rounds being competitive, the last couple, they've been getting slammed. Try just waiting alongside Hobbit to hold down the crossfire on the B site to remove the next couple of players from play. Scout of Forzy does look for something out towards Long. Now forced to be the bomb carrier, potentially the bomb planter as well towards this B execution. It's about to start coming in. Now Matthews and Aji is just hoping for some sort of entry. Even Hobbit boosted up to the flower pot. Shiro rotating over. They're playing three on B. This is another sick read. Resmoke going down at just over 30 seconds. They've got to come in. Yeah, they got to flash forward to that. Hobbit with his only one kill. Actually, Navani gets it instead. Lines up two more as well with the wall bank collaterals. 4C gets his scout shot in on Shiro, but that's as far as it will go for him. Three players alive. I think they grab the orb. Yes, they do. 10-1 to the board. Gambit denied that bomb plant. The lost bonus is what Enterprise are working with now, and they can get another rebuy. And this has got to be so frustrating to come in from Enterprise, because when you looked at them on the last map, their protocols were on point. The way that they were over-rotating. The amount of times we saw Mangus walking out to B, and Inters had just rotated away. Just moved out to mid, and B-Site was completely opened up. We saw so many rounds where they were out-reading Gambit. This time on Inferno, it's not the same. It's vice versa, if anything. Gambit also just using their firepower as well as their wits. Decimating whatever Enterprise are bringing to the table here. Flashes forward, M4 leans up for Hobbit. But again, they're too scared to take banana control thanks to the smokes and the mollies and this presence that they've had out there for the CT side. Third man to rotate in towards the A site. Fast play up for Enterprise's offensive, but the nades stop them and they do damage. Now, just the chunks that come through with these HEs on a consistent basis. They bet out their AWP. They know that it's playing in from brackets. And again, look at the way they're stacking up the A site. Four players here for Gambit. Well, we're backed up to Cubby. Smoke down. He just waits. So do the rest of the CT forces. So do Enterprise, for that matter. Stop trying to force out particular engagements. The flashes do come in from the CT side. And that allows Hobbit to peek in. They force the Orc back. Get the kill on the Ds. Now, Matty's desperate for this trade. But there's a player up above. They don't know about Inters. They try to get the counter flashes in. The two trades do come back. Mangas actually doubles up on Shiro as well. Four versus two. Inters is going to come up to support. But he's way too late. His teammates have fallen. And Mangus gets himself a hat trick of frags. Nafani so far away. And one man forced out the entire aim site on his lonesome. And they've seen Nafani. They know exactly where he is towards this banana position. This should be an easy kill coming through for the AWP. It's not oh. even needed. The E-Live gets it done. What a round. You see how that smoke even fell through one of the gaps? You see that little glitch that we've seen on oh, the yeah. Body blocked there and it fell through. So not even he could make his way out towards mid like he intended. That's hurt them. Cost them that frag. Cost them that weapon. Another round to the board of Enterprise. Their second up on the board. But what an effort it has been to get here, Dweg. Yeah, Mangus and Matty just coming into their own. Double entry up on short side. I thought with that bait and switch, the way that Hobbit was playing up in the cobby and the... The angle being held in library from Enters, that that was going to be enough. Instead, so much impact gets poured out from short side. And now, impact towards the top of Banana will lead a one for one. Nanay the Hobbit, not good enough to get the frag, unfortunately. Yeah, take the D's to 33. 
So this could still be a frag pretty easily for them. Counter maze come back and they find damage on the Hobbit credit. Brings it back to evens the HP advantage. The four versus four scenario that Enterprise can work with. Two, two split as well. So both sites will be slightly weakened. A is going to be the play. Yeah, rather than Axile playing pit or up to balcony, he's actually behind default going into round 13. He's got his teammate up from long with Shiro, who shouldn't be able to do much with the AWP. He's getting smoked off. Cindy set for man to join the fight. Leaving Hobbit backed up towards Coffins to find his picks where and when necessary. In with Shiro's AWP, looks around towards Long, flashes forward. He's blinded. Axel with his kill. Flick onto the second man, connects on Mangus. And Axel continues to hold focus for the time being. Four versus two. Gambit, hold presence still. AWP on sight, seeing one player dropping out. Eli does take fire to Axel, win that one in. Shiro gets close on the boxes, puts the backstab as well for Inters' his part. Get out towards short. Looking boiler, Eli's gonna cover him. Spray goes a little bit too awkwardly for him. And the AWP falls, he's desperately looking for Shiro, but Hobbit's dropped D-Live. Shiro peeks in towards Broken Wolf, lands that final frag and brings in the 11th round for Gambit. This is still looking dominant in spite of the rounds that Enterprise has started to bring back. They're still not following them up. Whenever you go for an apps pop, Jay, you need a moto smoke. And that round exactly tells you why. Yes, the player on the side of Axel is completely blind. He can't see anything. He's getting hit by all the flashes. What about Shiro? He gets half blinded by the first. He recovers. He's not smoked off. He finds so much impact again with that AWP. You cannot afford to go for that set piece or that strat without the smoke down to moto. Otherwise, you're just going to get pincered in. Difference of nine rounds right now. Gambit might have struggled in that first map. Definitely lost that first map. But here we stand with a much better basis for them to work from. Have lost that first pick, though. Shiro falls to Matty's. And they have banana control. And Inter's just playing the off angle. Hobbit going to uh -oh. get flashed back in. Top banana. Fawzi even blinded. It connects with the AWP. Yeah, overly zealous there. Now the finally have to do what Shiro could do. Except with an M4 swapped out for the AWP. Knows that Eli's out towards that corner position. The AWP as the T-side fires back. Nades on. Makes some damage. Second nade as well. That might indicate that there's two players out there. Do they fall for this fake? I don't think so. They would have known that Hobbit falling, they play sort of 2B, late round, mid round. So comes down to the position of a slow rotation that can come through back out from CT. And just the amount of silence that's now coming through and how they slow the round down. Trying to see if they can force an over-rotate. They've even left the alive just to lurk out from B. Unfortunately, he can't find anything with it. And his presence does not force the rotate back. We still have two CTs standing on the A site. Inters on the site itself. Axile at pit. Nafani just waiting back at that B site. We'll go ahead for the rotations. Molotov back. The spray is through from Inters. Only finds the one kill. Axile can trade it though. Look, he's the second, but he can't hold on to it. Nafani now up for the full-on retake. And yes, they've got full Z low HP, but it's still a 1v2. Now try and get that bomb plant through. Nafani walking through that murder smoke. The teammate out from Pit of Mangus is going to be able to protect his teammate, find a couple of kills, and find Enterprise, another on T side, to make it three. A good read on Mangus, but couldn't quite line up the entire crosshair. No headshot, no kill found, and he gets another frag to his name. He might not be the most uh, high-numbered player on the server right now, but he is performing, and his kills have always been impactful. Enterprise get their third because of him, and they continue to make this look relatively competitive against Gambit, but in round 15, we're still looking at 11-4 at best for Enterprise. Gambit want to try and get a 12-3, but the force buy back in indicates otherwise. Yeah, Hobbit just with the SMG, trying to see if he can get up close and personal what? with the smoke. Axel is aggressed down from mid, and the Deagle from Shiro is going to bait and switch. And how they've come away with that much aggression and found that much impact for it, I do not know. A four versus two, Gambit. So broken on this money line, so broken on this buyback. But they've broken Enterprise in this scenario. M4 Mangus will try press on towards the apartments, look for somebody in pit on the graveyard. Inters will be at mini. M4 continues leaning forward. Make no noise. But spot anyway. Tagged up. Taken down. Oh, this round is so beautiful from Gambit. And it's the realization of the weapons that they've got in front of them, Jay. They say, right, we'll make an aggressive move. We'll push down for mid. Axel gets two kills. It takes them so long to trade him that Shiro just gets posted on the angle. And he says, I've got your backup. They swing out from second mid. You might die, but I'm going to get the trade frag. Wonderfully done for Gambit once again. Axile, so much aggression held. And it is an Eli. I've had absolutely no idea it was coming. Well placed. Well faced. And you know what we can well say, done Jay? half at this stage here. What, what can we say, Dwayne? We saw glimpses from Enterprise. That's what we can say. We saw good signs from them in a lot of these rounds. 
just not enough glimpses mm. not round conversions and I feel as if with this kind of a scoreline you're just putting fuel into the beast at this point to Gambit aren't you yeah you don't want this to happen at all and for Enterprise they need this pistol they're over three in pistols in the game so far in this particular series they lose this pistol it's probably game over at least this map I feel like you might have something cut right about that Enterprise, despite having some competitive rounds, have still only scored three. And that is the bottom line, the score line. The favors Gambit quite heavily. USP set blocks in. Utility for Nafani on this pistol basis, but nobody else. Are they alive being really the only B player? Does not help the situation, knowing that it does look like as if it's going to be a B exec. He might just have to play a passive or get a one for one. I'll well, talk back to new box. Sat here at Coffins, he will lean up, spot these individuals, but spam away with the bullets and eventually just go down and axe on the jumpy face. Harley left and alive, does get caught off guard and almost loses on the frag, but Matty's will turn it into a four versus four. Retake might as well be attempted here by uh, Enterprise. I do see a couple of players, Axile in particular, takes that engagement, dishes out damage towards 4C. Matty's has been tagged as well. All players coming in from CT here. Time starts to tick away, starts running out on them. Forcey and Matthews with those two frags, Axel with one of the turn around. Second frag for him as well, he's this triple, but Forcey takes him back, enters. Now stands in the back of the site, over towards Dark. Time is ticking, smoke on the bomb, they've seen one. They caught off Magnus, he's playing distraction, shot back for Interstone. He needs a knife kill, oh, oh he's just barely got it. Gambit steal the pistol and find themselves up on a lucky 13. He looks so calm, mate. I can't believe he's so calm in that one. 1v2. One he knows as soon as that smoke goes down, notice how he strafes out from that right-hand side. He has to gather the information on what's going on there. Spotting Mangus on the side of that smoke, getting a couple of bullets forward, and then the final knife attempt onto Forzi. So close to getting that defuse forward, but not quite enough. What a steal that is from the 1v2, Clutch. Good call to go for the right click as well. The left click would not have been enough, even with two of them. Force back in for Enterprise, Deagles, CZs. Scout out for Forzy. And he does connect on Shiro. That's a much better start for them. This force by, you talked about their force by conversion not being all that great for EP. That's not indicative of this start in the round. Will Forzy find a second kill on Afani? It all just comes down if they can bait the AWP up, just no. wide swings it. Doesn't even flash on, doesn't even smoke. And now for Mangus, pressure goes onto him, he's alone. Smoke set back at Moto, Axile leans in, does not know exactly where the CT player is playing from. Now he does, and flies the frag pretty easily for it as well. Hobbit's assistance was there. The bomb should go down. Retake seemingly set up here by Enterprise, but you start questioning whether or not it's worth it to hold on to these weapons, go into the full eco with upgrades. We saw them do that previously in this series. Hobbit. LG live, win out that fight. Now things are just falling apart. Yeah, you got that Galil, not even going to get caught. Matthews with a deagle, just hoping for some exit damage. Try to see if he can catch anyone off. The timing for Hobbit's lurk out could be everything. Axel just jiggling, getting that information. Hobbit's put himself in a great position. The deagle's even down to 22 points of health. Axel's not going to fall. And I'm begging Enterprise at this point, just stop forcing after losing the pistol 0-4-12 when it comes to these round two breaks in this event so far. And this is going to be something that the new coach of this team of Nevo is going to have to look at and say, okay, what do we need to adjust differently? Or for now, do we just not buy and just get the rifles in early? It's a possibility here. 14-3. And they will force it out for this one. You mentioned how the tactical pauses were going to have some... Or the uh, force buys in the situations were going to have some impact in the pistol round. And this is what's going to have to happen here. Forcing the issue, going back in with Gambit's win. Enterprise clamoring for anything that they can get out of this one. Anything at all. Inters with a shot onto Forcey. Shira follows suit on Eli. Gets caught off guard for his they've done low HP. Matis will try to look for that trade and he will get it. But it's still a two for one. Mac 10 in from Nafani will find another player. Matt is going to get overwhelmed with the entire T-side force. Gets his second kill somehow, so he's still alive. Now picks up that AK and Mangus out from Boiler. Could drop the bomb. It all just comes out if they check him. They don't. He only finds Nafani. Hobby finds the trade. Should have held an extra few seconds and that trigger discipline could have worked out better for them. As it stands though, 15 to 3. Axile gets Matty's. And it is map point for Gambit with 12 map points to come back to. Maybe this 2-0 shouldn't have been as easily as we assumed it should have been here, Dweg. 
Enterprise looked fantastic on Dust 2, but Gambit looked fantastic on Inferno. Yeah, Gambit have been the better team by far. They've outclassed them. This is a scary looking Gambit out here on Inferno. They've really picked up their act from first snap. And for Enterprise, so many of these rounds just feel as if one kill difference is going to make it all. Hobbit getting their opening man advantage. The HG comes back. Adage can't find anything. The aggression down from mid, not working out. 4v3. Only starting things off well enough for the Gambit. Count those picks in. Eli, Fawzi, and Matties, the three defenders, to hold off for this final execution. Two of which are over towards that B site. One man sat on long. Matias press their way forward. Util in. Execution set. Shiro does get caught off guard. Inters peeks in completely towards that crossfire. And Axile will find Matty. So this should be it. Forzi does pick up a Galil. But it's the Fardy to close him down. 16 to 3. Far, far better from Gambit. Not allowing Enterprise to get any momentum from the word go. And the end result shall be a Mac 3 in our quarterfinal. And I can't even start to imagine what the mental state is like here now for Enterprise. Knowing we've done so much hard work. Preparation coming into this best three we beat them on their map pick of dust too we've come into our own and we've just been rolled been absolutely yeah. slammed out of the equation and we talked about the risks of picking inferno obviously so many times over the course of this map up and that really i think is that the worst case scenario of how those risks will play against you if you're a team like enterprise like that has got to suck real hard for them knowing how they possibly could have got the 2-0 to yeah. I, I think that was definitely on the table at this stage, given how well they performed. They just didn't see any of that over on Inferno. It did feel as if after about the 7th or 8th round, I don't want to say they were checked out, but it felt like a lot of things weren't going their mm. way. The early start of this map, even though it was 0-7, it really felt as if there were a few rounds there that they could have won. They kept buying. They had some really close ones. After that fact, though, they were just done. And Gambit started using that momentum, really coming into their own. And this is them at top form. Absolutely, 100%. And this is the gambit that probably should be able to be seen throughout the rest of the tournament at this particular stage. Like, this is a, a team that you could argue is definitive favourites in this bracket. Like, considering the top three position they have in the world, the way that they went in the major, like, having the struggles that they've had so far have been so characteristic. Looking into Mirage now, we have to ask, is that going to continue down like this? Is there going to be more dominance, or is there more doubts to be put into Gambit's mind? I look at Mirage, and it's a decent map for both teams. I think from a mental standpoint, Gambit have definitely got the edge going into the third map. And for Enterprise, they've got to shake it off, say, we've got Red. Let's move into map three. Let's stay positive because this is our last chance. If we really want to get an upset, single little in bracket, it has to be map three. We move into map three after this short break in the analysts come back to break down Inferno, see what they can break down on in Inferno. So don't go anywhere.